Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. You know, it's been a while since I talked about video games on my show, and so far, other than Kingdom Hearts, I did blog Pixels, which showed a video game styled Alien Invasion, and Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, which was a video game sequel to Jumanji from the 1990s. And while I am excited for a sequel to an animated video game movie, there is one certain type of video game that I never experienced yet in my life. Virtual Reality. Now, Virtual Reality is a computer-generated scenario that simulates a realistic experience. The immersive environment can be similar to the real world. In order to create a lifelike experience grounded in reality or sci-fi, current virtual reality technology mostly commonly uses virtual reality headsets or multi-projected environments. Sometimes in a combination with physical environments or props, in order to generate realistic images sounds, and other sensations that simulate a user's physical presence in a virtual or imaginary environment. A person using virtual reality equipment is able to look around the artificial world, move around in it, and interact with virtual features or items. The effect is commonly created by virtual reality headsets consisting of head-mounted displays with a small screen in front of the eyes, but can also be created throughout specially designed rooms with multiple large screens. Now, we all know that Spy Kids 3D was technically a virtual reality video game movie with some great action scenes and amazing effects for the time. But just recently, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, Steven Spielberg, the director of the previously blogged BFG from two years ago, gave us a new movie that takes us to a virtual world called The Oasis, and it is the subject of my blog today. Released on March 29th, 2018, the movie is Ready Player One. Now... Let's get this game started. The film is set in 2045, with the world on the brink of chaos and collapse. But the people have found salvation in the Oasis, an expansive virtual reality universe created by the brilliant and eccentric James Halliday. When Halliday dies, he leaves his immense fortune to the first person to find a digital Easter egg that he is hidden somewhere in the oasis, sparking a contest that grips the entire world. When an unlikely young hero named Wade Watts decides to join the contest, he is hurled into a breakneck, reality-bending treasure hunt through a fantastical universe of mystery, discovery, and danger. So, what do I think of this movie? Well... It. Was. Awesome! This has got to be the best movie of 2018 so far. In fact, I'd like to call it a live-action Wreck-It Ralph. Or heck, a new Who Framed Roger Rabbit. But, before I get ahead of myself, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Warner Brothers and D-Line Pictures won an auction for the rights to Ernest Cline's novel, Ready Player One, in 2010, before it had been published. Cline was set to write the script for the film, which Donald D. Line and Dan Farrar would produce. Eric Eason rewrote Cline's script, and Zach Penn was hired to rewrite the previous drafts by Cline and Eason. Village Roadshow Pictures came on board to co-finance and co-produce the film with Warner Brothers. 
Steven Spielberg signed on to direct and produce the movie, which Christy Makosko Krieger also produced, along with D-Line and Farah. Ready Player One is Steven Spielberg's first action fantasy film since The Avengers of Tintin in 2011. Klein and Penn made several revisions from Klein's book for the movie. Most of these changes were to eliminate scenes that would be uninteresting in a visual format, such as when Wade beats a high score in Pac-Man or recites all the lines from the film War Games. Production was set to begin in July 2016. Screenwriter Zach Penn tweeted on July 1st, 2016 that the first week of filming had been completed. In August and September 2016, filming took place in Birmingham, England, which included Livery Street in the Jewelry Quarter area, which also utilized the Backpackers Hostel Hatters for internal filming. Other locations in the city included the former industrial area of Digbeth. The film is set in Ohio. Principal photography ended on September 27, 2016. Spielberg worked with Industrial Light and Magic to oversee the film's visual effects, meeting with ILM for three hours, three times a week. He has stated that this was the most difficult movie that he has done since Saving Private Ryan. The movie pays homage to the popular culture of the 1980s as in the book, but also extends to the 1990s, 2000s, and 2010s. The film's special project supervisor, Deidre Bax, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is credited for clearing the licenses to all the properties depicted in Ready Player One. Among licensed characters in the film are the Iron Giant, the RX-78-2 Gundam from Mobile Suit Gundam, Mega Godzilla, Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th films, Freddy Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street films, Duke Nukem, Tracer from Overwatch, Ryu, Blanca and Chun-Li from Street Fighter, Sonic the Hedgehog, Laura Croft from Tomb Raider, Kratos from God of War, Nathan Drake from Uncharted, Sackboy from Little Big Planet, and of course Chucky from the Child's Play films. A massive in-car race includes vehicles such as DeLorean Time Machine from the Back to the Future films, the Mac 5 from Speed Racer, the possessed 58 Plymouth Fury car from Christine, the van from A-Team, the modified Ford Falcon used in Mad Max, the monster truck Bigfoot, and Kanita's motorcycle from Akira. Additional references include Robocop, Jurassic Park, King Kong, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Halo, have also been identified in promotion materials. Some of my favorite cameos in the movie are Freddy Krueger from The Nightmare on Elm Street, Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, King Kong, the T-Rex from Jurassic Park, Chucky the Killer Doll from Child's Play, and, of course, the Iron Giant. In my opinion, these things are awesome, and several of them made me feel like a kid again. Also, I liked the use of 80s and 90s music. Now, other than those, one of my favorite parts of the movie is when our main heroes go into The Shining, in order to find the second key. Plus, I'm surprised that Stephen King didn't like the movie, but it was still surprising that this movie would insert stuff from R-rated films in a PG-13 rated movie. 
I also liked the addition of the time car from Back to the Future used for the final battle. Also, the final challenge where folks were trying to retrieve the final key while playing Adventure gave me Don't Break the Ice flashbacks. Another thing I liked in this movie are the visuals of the Oasis, which is outstanding. To me, it looks very breathtaking and almost realistic. Plus, I like how the motion capture animation is used for everyone's avatars. Plus, some parts of the movie made me think of Disney's Tron with a little bit of We Will Rock You. Which, I pray, will be made into a movie someday. Also, I find it kind of bizarre that in Columbus, Ohio, Mostly everyone's houses are stacked in this story. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang Notes, let's move on to the cast. Our main hero, Wade Watts, aka Parzival, is played by Ty Sheridan, best known from X-Men Apocalypse. Wade is a gunter and one of the High Five who wishes to win the quest so he can leave the stacks. In my opinion, Wade is a smart, brave, and independent character, and I think his avatar makes him look very cool. Also, I think his gaming skills are very remarkable. Next we come to Wade's love interest, and my favorite character in the movie, Samantha Cook, aka Artemis, played by Olivia Cook, whom I remember from Ouija. Samantha is a famous gunter who works with various allies to ensure the Oasis is kept free and out of the hands of IOI. Samantha is also the goddess of the hunt for Halliday's Easter Egg. To me, Samantha is a strong character and a great leader. Also, I think her avatar makes her look like a Sonic the Hedgehog character. Plus, I think she's very pretty. Next up is my second favorite character in the movie, Helen Harris, aka Eck, played by Lena Waithe. This member of the High Five is a gunter who is, in fact, male in the Oasis and female in reality. She's also a longtime friend of Wade's. Eck runs a virtual garage in his free time to create and fix various vehicles and items. She's also an intellectual and dedicated individual. This can be observed by her high competitive ranking within the Oasis. Her elite knowledge of video games that rivals Wade's, along with her long-term hunt for Halliday's egg. She also appears to be quick-witted and humorous. Next we come to our villain, Nolan Sorrento, the CEO of Innovative Online Industries, played by Ben Mendelssohn, who got to be in Rogue One. His main objective is to find Halliday's Easter egg by any means necessary so that he may take over and monetize the Oasis. And why does he want to do this? Well, it's because he wants to avenge his sister and force people to face the world that they've been neglecting. To me, the most insane thing that he does is detonate a bomb under Wade's ant trailer in the stacks, killing everyone in that stack, including Mrs. Gilmore. Last but not least, we have James Halliday, a.k.a. Anorak, 
played by the BFG himself, Mark Rowlitz. James is the deceased co-creator of the Oasis, who includes an easter egg hidden inside, after his passing, that grants control over the Oasis to its winner. In my opinion, this character is an eccentric and senile old man, but that's because he isolated himself from the people around him. But despite that, Halliday is shown to have his childish moments. And of course, he loves the 1980s, when he was a teenager, to the point of firing employees who bear no knowledge of 1980s pop culture. Also, I think his avatar makes him look like an old wise wizard. The rest of the cast includes T.J. Miller, Simon Pegg, Philip Zeo, Wynn Marzaki, and Hannah John Kamen. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Ready Player One has got to be one of the best movies I've seen this year. Next to Black Panther, that is. It has amazing visuals, a ton of memorable cameos from other films, the music by Alan Silvestri is fantastic, the action is epic, and the characters are hardcore. Plus, the motion capture is very realistic, too. And so, I give this movie the highest rating of 100%. Go see it in theaters while you still have a chance. Well, that's it for today, gamers. Be sure to join me for my next blog, where I look at something so bad that God will make it rain on my territory. Mustang Power.